You might want to know how to stretch your psoas if you have tight hip flexors, chronic lower back pain, or bad posture. Today, I'm going to show you a simple psoas release exercise to relax your tight psoas muscle. Hey beautiful humans, I'm Suki Baxter, founder of Whole Body Revolution, where I help you to rewire yourself for greater health, happiness, and success. If you're new here, make sure you click that subscribe button so you never miss a video update, and all of the links to everything that I mentioned in this video, you can find linked in the description box below. Let's get into it. The psoas muscle is a deep abdominal hip flexor that connects your spine to your inner thigh. Because of its connection from your spine to your femur bone, tight psoas muscles can cause hip pain and lower back pain. A lot of people have been told to try psoas stretching exercises or psoas massage to treat their back pain or hip pain, but usually they're missing the most important part of the muscle to address. And so they're not getting the deep spinal release that they're looking for and which I'm going to show you in a minute. So stay tuned for that. But first, it's important to get an idea of how your psoas impacts your physical and emotional health. Yes, a tight psoas is connected to trauma in your body. Psoas pain isn't the only symptom of a tight psoas. Your psoas, the muscle of your soul as some call it, is deeply connected to emotions stored in your body. Fear, stress, and anxiety cause your psoas to become stiff and rigid instead of supple, which then results in physical and emotional exhaustion. In fact, your adrenal glands sit close to your psoas and the sympathetic ganglia of your spine are connected to it as well. Chronic psoas muscle tension can send your nervous system into fight or flight, but I'm gonna show you how to release stress and anxiety from your body with a simple psoas muscle stretch. Now, most people focus on addressing the lower portion of the psoas where it intersects with the iliacus muscle using psoas massage or psoas stretching exercises. Instead, I'm going to show you how to get a psoas trauma release by mobilizing the upper attachment of your psoas muscle where it connects to your spine. Muscle tension in this area can be implicated in cases of middle back pain, upper back pain, scoliosis, hunched shoulders, and even neck tension. A tight psoas upper attachment also causes shallow breathing because it impairs the function of your diaphragm. Before we get into the exercise, it's important to note that this might not be appropriate for all people. If you have bulging or herniated discs or other spinal conditions that could impair your mobility, be sure you check with your doctor or physical therapist prior to implementing this practice into your own stretching routine. And if you feel pain or discomfort at any point during the stretch, stop immediately. Okay, now that we've got that covered, what you're gonna need for this practice is a yoga wheel, and I'll add that link in the description box below. Place the yoga wheel behind you, and you're gonna wanna position it so it's more or less right below what would be the bra strap line on women. So you're going to lean back, and get the wheel nice and centered on your spine. And your feet are going to be flat on the floor or your yoga mat with your knees bent, making sure you have equal weight on the right and left side of your pelvis resting on the floor. So your hips are gonna be down. And you're just going to gently arch your back against the yoga wheel. You may need to adjust your positioning a little bit, so scooting back or forward to get it just right. And you should feel a nice stretch through your ribs and back in this area. You do not want to hyperextend your lumbar spine, so really make sure that you are stretching against the yoga wheel and not sort of hyperextending your low back to kind of leverage your ribs and spine back. So really using the yoga wheel as that fulcrum to round. And that's really key because what we're doing is this is where your psoas attaches to your spine, more or less. This is the area that's affected by it. And so we're really using that yoga wheel as a fulcrum to extend that muscle and get a little bit of length there, which is a very difficult thing to do. So now you can bring your hands here if you need a little bit of neck support. Um, I like to place them on my knees for this portion. All we're going to do is make a very small movement and that is to gently shift your right knee forward. So you're gonna put a little bit more weight in your right foot and then you're gonna switch and shift your left knee forward. So you can do this with or without your hands on your knees. And you're just gently 
elongating through one side and then through the other side. So as my right knee goes forward, I get a little more weight in my right foot and a little bit more stretch here. Now, this is a very small movement. As you can see, I'm not you know, lifting my pelvis and really working it. It's not very active. It's a very, very micro movement. And you should feel a little bit of twisting through your spine and ribs in this area. Make sure that as your knee is going forward, you allow your body to rest even more on the yoga wheel. And you should start to feel a little bit of an opening in this area, a little bit of movement. Again, this is really, really small. We're just trying to get the psoas to respond just a little bit. We don't need a huge stretch for this area. And this actually mimics something that I do with clients when I'm working with them doing hands-on therapy. Okay, so bringing your hands to your head to give yourself a little bit of support here, you're going to release with one arm and gently extend your arm up. Now you don't need to really do anything with your core except hold it still. And as you reach your arm and really lengthen through your fingers, you should start to feel a little bit more stretch and elongation through this part of your back. And then we'll go ahead and switch and do the other side. And you will probably notice that one side is much more responsive, much more easy to move than the other. So through my right side, I get nice elongation. I can feel the spine opening up. Through my left side, that's always been my stickier side. And it just doesn't feel quite as supple. And the nice effect of this is that it will actually start to balance out your spine. So if you have asymmetry, if you have crookedness or scoliosis, this can start to help to balance out the muscle tension on your spine and alleviate the pressure that you get from tighten, too much tightness on one side or the other. Now, if you wanna take this up a little bit, if all of this is feeling good, you can lengthen one leg and extend the opposite arm. So you get a little bit of a twist there. And you should make sure that you're allowing that yoga wheel to catch your weight and stretch through your ribs and spine. Again, if you're feeling any discomfort or pain with this, stop immediately. This should not be painful or uncomfortable. It might be challenging and difficult from a coordination standpoint, but you shouldn't feel pain. And in fact, pain is counterproductive. Coming back to the right side. With the left arm extended. And notice I'm taking a bit of time with each of these. So I'm not moving quickly from side to side. I'm spending a moment really lengthening through my left leg and through my right arm and then through my right leg and through my right arm, or excuse me, left arm. And go ahead and come up off the yoga wheel carefully and notice how your back feels. If you feel some looseness through here, a little bit of elongation, Often there's some lift through your chest and your shoulders are back. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you found it helpful, give it a like and make sure you subscribe so you never miss a video update. Thanks so much for watching.